Good evening. Here's a concise overview of tonight's headlines. The Ministry of Labor investigates a workplace fatality at Alia Construction Company. Guyana's ambassador to Venezuela presents credentials to President Maduro. Police probe an alleged murder in Burbis. Prison escapee Kean Webster is recaptured. Clifton Graham faces charges of rape. Tyrese Gonzalez is charged with burglary. Jensen France faces charges of malicious damage to property. Additionally, a vendor receives an 18-month sentence for cannabis possession. A laborer is remanded on a break and enter charge. Two men are charged with simple larceny in Diamond Magistrates Court. Lastly, three construction workers are remanded for break and enter and larceny. Stay tuned for further updates. Ministry of Labor investigates workplace fatality at Alia Construction Company. The Ministry of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health OSH, department has launched an investigation into a tragic workplace fatality that occurred at the Omai Port, Vismar, Upper Demerara River, Region 10, Upper Demerara Berbis, involving the Alia Construction Company. The victim has been identified as 20-year-old forklift operator, Mr. Colin Nurse Joseph, residing at Lot 229 Wisrock Housing Scheme, Vismar, Linden. The incident took place around 15, 25 hours on Tuesday, February 20, 2024. Preliminary investigations indicate that Mr. Joseph and a co-worker were operating a forklift to load the line and move wood spoil when the machine became stuck in the sand. Seeking assistance from truck drivers, the forklift began to capsize, and in his attempt to escape, Mr. Joseph was tragically struck in the neck and back by the machine. Despite receiving immediate medical attention from the company's doctor, Mr. Joseph succumbed to his injuries while being transported to the Linden Hospital complex. In response to the accident report, Mr. Darwin Bourne, Senior Occupational Safety and Health Officer, and Mr. Ray Hosanna, Occupational Safety and Health Officer, initiated an investigation. They visited the accident site and held meetings with company representatives and hospital officials. The Honorable Joseph Hamilton, Minister of Labor, extends his heartfelt sympathy to the grieving relatives, co-workers, and friends of the deceased. He emphasizes the importance of maintaining good safety and health practices in the workplace to prevent similar incidents that could result in the loss of precious lives. Investigations into the incident are ongoing and further updates will be provided as they become available. Guyana's ambassador to Venezuela presents credentials to President Maduro. In a formal ceremony held at the Miraflores Presidential Palace on Tuesday, February 20, 2024, Dr. Richard Van West Charles was officially accredited as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana to the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. President Nicolas Maduro Moro received Ambassador Van West Charles and accepted his credentials, solidifying the diplomatic ties between the two nations. During the ceremony, Ambassador Van West Charles conveyed warm greetings from His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Erlfan Ali, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, as well as the people of Guyana. He expressed his unwavering dedication to fostering stronger relations between Guyana and Venezuela, emphasizing the importance of cooperation and collaboration between the two countries. In response, President Maduro extended his respects to President Ali and the people of Guyana, highlighting his admiration for their leadership and the enduring friendship between Venezuela and Guyana. The exchange of messages underscored the mutual commitment to nurturing diplomatic norms and pursuing avenues for expanded bilateral cooperation. Accompanying Ambassador Van West Charles were his spouse, Mrs. Vivian Roxanne Van West Charles, along with Mr. Robin Motain, Counselor, and Mr. Ganga Persaud, political attaché of the Embassy of Guyana. Their presence symbolized the collective effort to strengthen the bonds of friendship and partnership between Guyana and Venezuela. The presentation of credentials marks a significant milestone in the diplomatic relations between Guyana and Venezuela, reaffirming their shared commitment to mutual respect, understanding, and cooperation on the international stage. Police investigate alleged murder in Berbice. 
the Bear Beast police are currently investigating an alleged murder that took place at approximately 23, 30 hours last night in No. 53 Village, Quarantine, Bear Beast. The victim has been identified as Colane Tony, a 31-year-old male laborer residing in the same village. According to initial reports, an altercation ensued between Tony and a 24-year-old male suspect from No. 51 Village, Quarantine, Bear Beast, over a phone. Witnesses observed the argument escalating, eventually leading to a physical confrontation between the two individuals. The suspect reportedly fled the scene on a motorcycle following the altercation. Tragically, Tony was discovered lying on the ground with severe injuries and significant bleeding. He was immediately transported to the Skeldon Public Hospital for medical attention. Despite efforts to save his life, Tony succumbed to his injuries. Authorities have conducted interviews with several individuals in the vicinity, gathering valuable information pertinent to the investigation. Efforts are underway to locate and apprehend the suspect, who remains at large. As investigations continue, the Bear Beast Police urge anyone with additional information regarding this incident to come forward and assist law enforcement in their efforts to bring the perpetrator to justice. The cooperation of the community is vital in ensuring a swift resolution to this tragic case. Prison escapee Keon Webster recaptured Keon Webster, aged 31, who had escaped from police custody while being transported to Lusignan Prison on the east coast of Demerara, has been apprehended. A member of the Brick Dam Police Station succeeded in recapturing Webster at approximately 11, 50 hours today at the Stabroek Market, Bazaar, located on Water Street, Georgetown. Presently, Webster is in police custody. Despite Webster's recapture, authorities are continuing their search for the other prison escapee, Kareem Douglas. Douglas remains at large, and law enforcement agencies are actively pursuing leads to locate and apprehend him. The swift action of the Brick Dam Police Station in apprehending Webster demonstrates the dedication and efficiency of law enforcement personnel in ensuring public safety and maintaining order. The collaboration between various police units underscores the commitment to bringing fugitives to justice and upholding the rule of law. Citizens are encouraged to remain vigilant and report any sightings or information regarding Kareem Douglas to the nearest police station. Cooperation from the public is essential in assisting law enforcement agencies in their efforts to ensure the safety and security of the community. Clifton Graham charged with rape Clifton Graham, aged 34 and residing in Bear Root, East Coast Demerara, found himself facing serious charges after being arrested on September 15, 2023. He was formally charged on Wednesday with the offense of rape of a child under 16 years, as stipulated under Section 10.3 of the Sexual Offenses Act, Chapter 803. Graham appeared before Magistrate George at Sparendam Magistrates Court No. 2, where the charge was read to him. He was not required to enter a plea at this stage and was subsequently remanded to prison. The case has been adjourned to March 22, 2024, marking the next step in the legal proceedings. The charge of rape, especially involving a child, is a grave offense that carries severe legal consequences. The legal system is committed to ensuring that justice is served and that the rights of victims are protected. Tyrese Gonsalves faces charges of burglary. Tyrese Gonsalves, a 21-year-old laborer hailing from Parika Bakdam, East Bank Essequibo, found himself in legal trouble after being charged with two counts of burglary. The alleged burglaries occurred last week at Middlesex, Essequibo Coast, targeting Hemant Persaud and Mahendra Nareen. Gonsalves was formally charged under Section 233 of the Criminal Law, Offenses, Act, Chapter 801. The charges were brought against him on Monday, February 19, 2024, at the Charity Magistrates Court, presided over by Magistrate Esther Sam. During the proceedings, the charges were read to Gonsalves, after which he was remanded to prison. The cases have been adjourned to March 8, 2024, and are scheduled to be heard at the Sutty Magistrates Court. This marks the continuation of legal proceedings in this matter. 
Burglary is a serious offense that carries significant legal repercussions. The legal system aims to ensure that justice is served, and individuals are held accountable for their actions. Yanson France faces charges of malicious damage to property. Yanson France, a 35-year-old resident of Queenstown, Essequibo Coast, found himself in legal trouble after being charged on Tuesday, February 20, 2024, with the offense of malicious damage to property. France stands accused of committing the act against the property of Marvin Cox, a 47-year-old resident of Queenstown, Essequibo Coast, on Saturday, February 17, 2024. The charge, laid under Section 160 of the Criminal Law, Offenses, Act, Chapter 801, was heard at the Anna Regina Magistrates Court before Magistrate Esther Sam. France was duly informed of the charge against him during the proceedings. Following the court appearance, France was granted bail in the sum of $100,000. The case has been adjourned to March 5, 2024, signaling the continuation of legal proceedings in this matter. This incident underscores the importance of respecting the property rights of others and the legal consequences of malicious actions. Vendor receives 18-month sentence for cannabis possession. Adingo Marks, a 30-year-old vendor hailing from Sand Reef, Queenstown, Essequibo Coast, faced the consequences of his actions as he was sentenced to 18, 18, months imprisonment and fined $115,200 for the possession of 76.8 grams of cannabis. Marks was apprehended with the marijuana in his possession within Queenstown, Essequibo Coast. Following the legal proceedings, the defendant appeared before Magistrate Esther Sam at the Anna Regina Magistrates Court, where he was ultimately found guilty. This verdict serves as a reminder of the serious repercussions associated with the possession of illegal substances. The court's decision underscores the importance of adhering to established laws and regulations. <laughs> Laborer remanded on break and enter charge. Raj Kumar Singh, a 29-year-old laborer residing in Andraneeming Sand Pit, Essequibo Coast, found himself facing serious charges after being accused of committing a break and enter building with intent to commit a felony offense. Singh allegedly carried out the act against Gopala Kastama, a 52-year-old self-employed individual from Aurora Estate, Essequibo Coast, on Thursday, February 15, 2024. The charge was formally laid against him under Section 228 of the Criminal Law, Offenses, Act, Chapter 801. The case proceeded to the Charity Magistrates Court on Monday, where Magistrate Esther Sam presided over the proceedings. During the hearing, the charge was read to Singh. It was noted that no application for bail was made by the prosecutor, leading to Singh's remand to prison pending further legal proceedings. The case has been adjourned to March 8, 2024, and will be heard at the Sutty Magistrates Court. This incident underscores the importance of upholding the law and the consequences individuals face when accused of criminal offenses. Two men charged with simple larceny in Diamond Magistrates Court. Emmanuel Glasgow, aged 19, a fisherman residing in Grove Sedam, East Bank Demerara, and Mark Poron, aged 29, a laborer from Sarah Joanna, EBD, found themselves in legal trouble after being arrested and charged with the offense of simple larceny. The charges stem from an incident involving Vidnu Satnu. According to reports, Glasgow and Puran were apprehended on February 14, 2024, and subsequently charged on Tuesday, February 20, under Section 164 of the Criminal Law Offenses Act, Chapter 801. The accused individuals made their appearance before Magistrate Judy Latchman at the Diamond Magistrates Court. During the hearing, the charge was read to them, and both Glasgow and Puran pleaded not guilty. Despite their pleas, bail was refused and they were remanded to prison until March 13, 2024. The case underscores the serious consequences individuals face when charged with criminal offenses, highlighting the importance of adhering to the law and respecting the rights of others. <laughs>